Hello, BookTube. With a few bumpy stops and starts, we are moving along with this endless library tour. It's not endless, I promise. There is an end to it, but we're a long way off from it. It might take us the rest of the year uh, to do. And what we're doing for these next few videos is uh, this Annex bookcase. Uh, it's tall, it's two bookcases, one on top of another. Uh, and it's, I call it the Annex bookcase because I have a whole wall of new releases separated by month going all the way to January and December uh, and every month as as the month changes I just did it this month I uh, I rotate those out so that the current month is on the top shelf separated out week by week in terms of release date and uh, I just I just recently uh, pulled out all of the July books one way or another and just cleared off that shelf and then moved up all the August books and then moved everything else up in addition to that uh, and when you do that, I I look at the books that you know that are that didn't make the cut or that I didn't get to review or that have, that are just simply left over, and I start to think about what I want to do with them. Most of them I send out to you, uh, and and uh, others I donate and whatnot, and uh, some a handful I keep uh, be, as sort of the you know the constantly changing kernel of the books from any given year that I think are worth adding to my to my permanent collection uh, and for a while I used a very small bookcase for that but it obviously wasn't good enough so I now have a large bookcase that is sort of the runoff of new books for the year so that's all we're gonna see in this bookcase is new books relatively new books uh, that have that have passed their month's release date so they're no longer on the work shelf uh, but I don't quite want to get rid of them I might want to relook at them I want might want to reread them uh, so we're on the second shelf of those, and we'll just go through all of these. Uh, the first one, I, I don't know how many of these we saw on this channel. I try to film most of the mail that I get, but I get a lot of books in the mail. So uh, this uh, first one is John Taliaferro. Taliaferro, he wrote a book called All the Great Prizes about John Hay that was just fantastic. And this is a new biography from him, Grinnell, about Bird Grinnell, a uh, pioneering uh, ecologist and conservationist. And I thought this was terrific. Uh, the the main difference between the two, nobody who's, who's interested in Bird Grinnell is going to be interested in John Hay and vice versa. The main uh, shift that must have played on Talia Farrow when he was writing this is that uh, Bird Grinnell was not all that likable. <laughs> and John Hay was infinitely likable. It was why everybody liked him. It was why he was always employed in Washington. So it, it must have been, I'd, I'd love to talk to the author about the very different experience of making those two biographies, unless maybe he liked Grinnell. He might have done that. Uh, this next one is James Elroy. This is This Storm. Uh, he, uh, a novel of his, any novel of his for me is a cause for celebration, even though they are they are brain bending. They are you have to wrestle with them. I do anyway, uh, and I did. I gladly wrestled with this, and I reviewed it. I, I will I will try again to put a review of everything, uh, or links to everything that I reviewed here. Uh, this next one is uh, an advanced copy of Ted Chang's Exhalation. Several of the stories, and this is a sh science fiction short stories, and several of the stories that are in here I ended up really liking uh, and need to revisit them. So I, I will do that. I might not. I might not revisit them until I get the paperback sometime early next year, but uh, one way or another, I, I'm not done with that book by any means. Uh, this next one is a, a classic, a reissued classic, a, a perfect example, one of many that we'll see in this bookcase, I would imagine. A perfect example of why I, I, I don't particularly need to go to used bookstores. You all seem to love it when I go to the Brattle Bookshop, and I love going there too. Uh, but older stuff does come to me even if I don't go to a used bookstore. This is uh, For Whom the Bell Tolls, and a lovely edition. A uh, lovely new hardcover with uh, supplementary material by Hemingway's son and grandson. Uh, that's not really important. The, the important thing is, for instance, this is a perfect example, I did not have a copy of this book. There are innumerable editions, but I didn't have a copy of this book, and now I do. Uh, no reason for me to ever get another one. I have one that was just sent to my doorstep. Same thing with this next one. Look at this lovely thing. This is from Restless Classics. They did a reprint of Virginia Woolf's Night and Day, which was a joy to reread. And this is this is a lovely thing. So, uh, and again, I, I I have some Virginia Woolf. I don't have anywhere near all of her stuff, and I didn't have this. Now I do. Uh, and this next one is a historical novel, one of the flood of historical novels in 2019. Uh, this is by Julie Oringer, and it's The Flight Portfolio. 
and it's a it's a historical novel about Vary and Fry, who uh, saved people during the Holocaust, and uh, the uh, this book I loved it. I thought it was fantastic, and I it has received some pretty rough handling from some critics who I really respect and on booktube and in the print media and I'm not I'm not 100% sure where that comes from uh, I, 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 I paid attention to this book I read it twice I loved it and I suspected my own loving it strongly enough so that uh, one way or another even though I don't know where that those criticisms come from I know they don't come from the book <laughs> it's not like it's not like this could have gaping structural and procedural flaws and me not know about it. <laughs> I paid. I paid. Uh, I paid it scrupulous mind. So I. I really liked it. I'll be wondering. I'll be wondering to see. Uh, the the reviews are still coming in so, here and there. I'll be wondering to see what the what the final verdict on it is. I'll be wondering to see actually what the paperback blurbs look like. Uh, there won't be one from me. I haven't written about it. Uh, this next one is by Sarah Parchek, and it is archaeology from space. A uh, slim thing that looks at. Uh, satellite archaeology at at uh, orbital and suborbital analyses of topographical features of the surface of the earth that allow for images to be seen and for pieces to be put together that people on foot would probably never see it's it it's the bird's eye view that allows features like cities or temples or whatnot to be seen and to be known and to be studied. I, I just thought it was fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Uh, this next one is Big Thing. Uh, it's great. It's one of the, one of the, there have been a handful of, uh, I mean, it's, it's still relatively early. It's still the July. But even so, there have been, there have been a handful of indisputably great books so far in 2019. And this is one of them. This is Mitch Zukoff's book, uh, Fall and Rise. Uh, the, the very first uh, non-crazy <laughs> soup to nuts narrative history of 9-11, of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Incredibly moving, incredibly good, incredibly smart. Uh, I loved it. Just loved it. It was hard to read, but I loved it. Uh, then there's this. Uh, the legendary John Barton did a big book called The History of the Bible uh, that takes it you know, takes the starting point that it has to take, the, the starting point that we took when we did a read-along of the Gospels, which is that this is a work of literature in the Bible's case, many works of literature, and that it has to be that. You have to consider it that, no matter what you might think, you know, in church. This and all other books like this are a study of a, a literary product and its literary antecedents and all of that, and uh, masterfully done. Very calm and very masterful. Uh, okay, all right, this was, this was great. This was fantastic. This is The British Are Coming by Rick Atkinson the first book in a projected trilogy that he's going to write about the American Revolution. I had high hopes for this, and it exceeded my high hopes. So my high hopes were created by his previous books, all of which are great, and this this exceeded them. And, uh, he just never stops trying. He just never stops working really hard at his books. I thought it'll be a very sad day if he turns 75 and writes a book that's phoned in. That will be. That will be. If he ever writes a world lit only by fire, I will hang my head in sadness. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. This is fantastic. This is the Library of America. This is Cornelius Ryan, the volume that they did with uh, the Longest Day and a Bridge Too Far, two of his, you know, epic World War II histories uh, that uh, I loved. Of course, most people love them. I read them in uh, those, you know, red and blue paged mass market paperbacks and I got I read them when they came out in trade paperbacks never in a million years thought they'd be in the Library of America that I have two of them in this one handy volume and that the volume would be so nice I mean the Library of America has sewn binding this has uh, color inset maps it has acid free pages it's a the perfect volume to have so I'm, I'm happy I'm happy for it even though the griping part of me whenever something like this comes out from Library of America the Cornelius Ryan was not born in America, and this is this is world history. This is not U.S. related. I mean, it is U.S. related, but you know what I mean. It's not a, it's not an American classic. And every time I see a volume like this come out in the Library of America, I automatically think about the long list of Americans who don't have Library of America volumes. I I understand uh, that you know there was an anniversary for D-Day, for instance, in 2019. I understand the commercial realities behind. Uh, uh, you know, an, an imprint like Library of America, but still, still. Uh, 
Okay, this next one is uh, a graphic novel. I've shown it to you before. It's Jonathan Federvorm's Moonbound, which is the story of not just the uh, Apollo 11 moon landing, which also had an anniversary in 2019, but also spaceflight just in general, and even long before spaceflight, the, uh, the higher mathematics that went into laying the groundwork for it. Largely loved this. I largely loved this book. It had a couple of problems uh, that a lot of the 2019 has seen an absolute glut of Apollo 11 and space program books, and some of them have been very boring, some of them have been very rote, some of them have been indeed very phoned in, and uh, others of them have been very meaty and, and very interesting, and most of them have shared a few, uh, I guess, natural flaws uh, that, that I, I've been waiting uh, and for one of them or two of these books to maybe step outside and see those flaws and look at them carefully and not many of them have far fewer than I would like mainly revolving around uh, all the Nazis who helped with the American space program despite having run slave labor camps that liquidated thousands of people went before they were rescued from the, the, the brutal hanging that they richly deserved and brought to America to put people on the moon it just I would have liked to see a little bit more judgment on those evil people and on the government that employed them despite their evil, uh, but uh, I haven't seen that so far, that might still happen, and I've seen bits of it in 2019. Uh, oh god, alright, oh, well, this is a 2019 IT book. Definitely, what, one, one way or another what you think of it. This is On Earth, We're, on Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vaughn. Uh, his debut novel, he did Night Sky with Exit Wounds, a collection of poetry that I don't know anybody who didn't love that. Even I loved it, and contemporary poetry, and I don't really get along. I've tried to make inroads in that in 2019. I think I've made a little progress, but it blew me away. It blew everybody away that I know that read it. Uh, this did not. <laughs> this, this debut novel did not. There are people who passionately love it. There are people who passionately hate it. There are even people who passionately love parts of it and passionately hate other parts of it. It's that kind of a book. Very uneven, uh, very unedited, uh, very unshaped, and uh, I felt the same way. There were, there were large chunks of it that I thought, uh, you know, if an editor had come near it and, and handled it firmly the way it should have been handled, then those chunks would have been excised or more skillfully incorporated into the book, but that did not happen. That cannot happen. In 2019, in our current uh, woke era, you you cannot do that, and, and so uh, we're gonna we're gonna deal with the results of that because if you can't be edited, then you're gonna get books like this all the time in the in the major marketplace. Uh, but I I reviewed it. I there were parts of it that I very much liked, same as everybody else. Uh, okay, then there's this is Daryl Johnson's Hate Land, uh, which is all about. Uh, extremism, and not just the alt-right, but the alt-left as well, the, the extremism in America and also around the world, a very, very good study. We're seeing more of those studies as more and more people realize uh, that this is a, a major existential threat. Most, most in America, for instance, those of you who don't live in America will, will equate America, our, our, the United States of America will be synonymous in your minds with rampant gun crime because we have a an ideology-fueled mass shooting every day in this country. It's, it's random chance that I have not been involved in one. Just random chance. It happens everywhere. Food festivals, schools, churches, synagogues, on the open street, anywhere, all the time. Uh, and that is a reflection both of America's utterly insane gun culture uh, and utterly insane gun laws, or lack thereof, but also of an increased uh, funneling of biddable young men into these kinds of ideologies. And most of those, for instance, if we restrict ourselves to mass shootings in America, most of those mass shootings in 2019 have been done by people who are the people Daryl Johnson is talking about. They're, they're not, most of them have not been done for personal reasons or for, for instance, religious reasons, i.e. Islamic reasons. Most of those mass shootings have been done by uh, radicalized white guys by radicalized white young men. Uh, and this book does a terrifically intelligent job. It's one of a few this year that have been really good on the subject. Uh, and then we end with historical fiction. This is Lawrence Goldstone's Assassin of Shadows. 
about that is President McKinley on the cover. One, one or two of you will know that face. And, and this is a novel about the, the very embryonic beginnings of presidential protection and of the Secret Service. And there are two characters, and there's a murder mystery, of course. It's, it's not just a documentary historical novel. There's, there's a driving plot to it. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I liked it enough to keep. Uh, and that's basically what this bookcase is. This is books that I didn't want to just summarily get rid of. <laughs> and uh, the, the, the progress here, the, the incremental uh, progression here will be that first the books, all books, are on the workshops. Then the saved books come onto this annex bookcase. And then theoretically, the next step is that when the annex bookcase gets too full, I pull off books by their subject matter and put the biographies over with biographies, the histories over with histories, and the next step after that, the last step after that, is for the, the books that have survived all of those steps to make it into the little book room, which is the, my permanent collection. That is the stuff that doesn't rotate anywhere, that doesn't you know, go anywhere. So we shall see how many of these things do. Uh, but that is, that is shelf number two of the Annex bookcase. So we're, I know this is a little slow. We'll try to pick up the pace. We'll try to do one of these a day. Uh, but that's it for now. That is, we're, we're just continuing this, with this library tour. Thank you, book two.